Okay. So, you guys, it has, hopefully everybody's got their quiz in or their test in. I'm grading them. I'll get them back to you. Well, I can't really get them back to you, but, you know, you'll know your score, hopefully, um, before the end of the weekend. i um, working on them. So, first of all, today, um, we're in Section 3.2, and we're talking about polynomials again. And today, what we want to do is take a look at what the polynomial graphs look like, because polynomials are, believe it or not, these curvy graphs. They are really... So, for example, polynomials can look like this. They're curvy. And, of course, this is an x cubed because it goes up, down, and back up again. This is an x cubed equation, um, but it's still a polynomial. This is some x cubed. Um, that's an x to the fourth. That's some x cubed. That's some x to the fourth, right? Starting to see a pattern, maybe. Um, x to the fifth would could look something like this. And one more up, that could be some x of the fifth. And they go on and on and on. So polynomials are curvy graphs, okay? So first of all, we know that polynomials have to have whole number exponents. And we want to actually graph them. So um, first of all, one of the things we can do is we can just graph it. We can use a graphics calculator. Um, and I have that. I have a graphics calculator. You probably don't. If we were in class, we'd use a graphics calculator. Go y equals, and I can just graph that um, x squared minus 4. Let me change the window so it's a decent window. Uh, let's go negative 5 to 5, and let's go a negative 10 to, say, 10. If I graph that, there it is. It's a parabola. We already knew that. You could also use Desmos. Okay, so if I go to my um, Desmos button, and if you don't have Desmos, you can upload Desmos as an app. So you go to the App Store. If you're not sure, it's really handy to have Desmos y equals, say, x and squared, subtract 4. And there it is, right? So there's another version of it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and then take and graph this for you. I don't have to do a perfect job. One, two, three, four. And the graph looks like this. And it says, use the trace button, find f of three. So one of the things I can do, and I'm not so sure how to do it in Desmos, but you guys probably do. You can probably tap at three, I'm sure. One, two, three. Can you tap on three? Hold on. I don't know. Anyway, no, my calculator can do this on the trace. Um, I can just go trace 3 and I get the answer of 5. Um, so if you use my trace button, 3, 5 is right about here. It's just a value 3, 5. Or, or you just can plug it in, right? Same thing, plug 3 in for x and you will get a value of 5, okay? Easy. Okay, now, example 2. It's a polynomial. It's going to curve a little bit more. Oh, ah, gosh, I'm already getting ahead of myself. It must be Friday. Increasing, decreasing. Well, let's take a look. So the line of symmetry is right there. Boom, right through the middle of it. Both graphs are connected right here at x equals 0. That's my line of symmetry. So increasing is where x is greater than 0. From here, it goes uphill. Um, I think Eli put this. I thought that was kind of cool. He went 0, comma infinity. I like that. That's the same thing. That's in interval notation. Decreases, increasing, going uphill. Decreasing is where it's going downhill. And going downhill from here where x is less than 0, okay? Or interval notation, negative infinity, comma, 0, okay? At 0, it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's just right at the bottom of the hill. Okay, number 2. Let's take a look at number 2, okay? So again, um, you can use Desmos. Desmos works fine. Um, I'm okay with that. Or you can use your graphics calculator. If I go to Desmos and get rid of this one, I go X, whoop, X, hold on, to the third power, and then subtract 9X. I get a graph that looks like that. Here's the advantages of Desmos. You can just squish it down, okay? Goes up above 10, so the graph looks a little bit like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it does go through at 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 10, 
and negative 10. Okay, and again, if I look at my picture from Desmos, it looks like that. Or I can put in my graphics calculator, same thing. It looks just like this graph right here. Goes up above 10 barely, goes through 0, 0. Back up, okay? Now, where's it increasing? Increase means going uphill. So we need to know this value, this point right here. So one of the things I can do on Desmos is I can just go tap on it. I think you should be able to do that. Come on. Oh, there it is. So if I tap on it, the point I'm looking for is this x value of 1.7 approximately. And then if I want this point, I can tap on that point and I get a x value of a negative 1.7, 3, 2, blah, blah, blah. We'll just go negative 1.7. Okay. So this is the x value here of negative 1.7. Okay. And an x value here at positive 1.7. So uphill. So here's what's going on. It's going uphill. We can use interval notation if you want to, but it's really from increasing. So it has to do the x values for increasing and decreasing. X values. I don't care about the y values. X value. What x value makes it go uphill? Because as I get more and more x values, I'm going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. So increasing is from, well, from here. It's going from a 1.7 to infinity, or you could say x greater than 1.7 might be easier, but it's also going uphill here. It's also going uphill here. So it's also increasing from, well, interval notation would be negative infinity to this x value, which is a negative 1.7, okay? That's interval notation, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more, or you can just say from x is less than 1.7. So where it's increasing. Now decreasing is where it's going downhill, okay? So it's decreasing. It's going downhill from here to here. Again, it's the x values from this x value to this x value. It's the x value. So it's going downhill from a negative 1.7 to a positive 1.7. That's interval notation, or I could say set notation, negative 1.7 less than x less than 1.7. Okay, this is hard, but we can do it. F of 0 is right there. F of 0 is right there, so F of 0 has to be 0. Plus, if you plug in 0, you get 0, 0, okay? Increasing, decreasing, all right? Let's move the page, okay? All right, next one. Sketch this graph, all right? So, again, if I go to my Desmos or your calculator, Desmos is kind of handy. I'm going to go X to the fourth power, subtract a 3x to the second power, subtract 5. Okay, that's what it looks like. Oh, it looks like a w. Well, that's next to the fourth. They are curvy, and every time you add a degree, it gets more curvy. So let me see. If I can just make a trace of this, it looks something like this. Okay, put that down here. Here and I look at my calculator, goes through it 2 and negative 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Um, if I tap it, it seems to have a point at 0, negative 5. That makes sense because of there. So I'll put negative 5 here. And then again, if I tap this point, I get a 1 point, negative 1.22. Negative 1.22, x value of a negative 1.2. 2, 2, okay, or we'll estimate next value of 1.2. And of course, it's symmetrical, this one is, and so you should have a positive 1.2 there. If you tap on it, sure enough, get a 1.2 there, okay? We're just going to let our calculator do the work. So I've got a 1.2 right about there, positive 1.2 for the x values, x values for increasing, decreasing, not x values, okay? So then, if I sketch it in, and I'm just taking what I have for my Desmos calculator. I'm just going to have something that looks like this. Goes like this. Here and back up. Okay? It's got a big W. Okay? Now, increasing, decreasing. Well, this one's kind of uh, increases in a lot of different places. So it's going to increase from here to here. And that's at the point 0, 5, where x is a 0. This is an x equals 0 right here. So it's increasing from here to here. So let's do increasing. So increasing, 
from here to here. We'll practice this when we're live too, okay? Increasing from here to here, so increasing from a negative 1.2 to a zero, okay? Or a set notation, it would be a negative 1.2 is less than x, which is less than zero, okay? That's set notation. Um, it's also increasing from here up. Now here are the x value, the x value, which is 1.2, so it's also increasing from a 1.2 to infinity, or we can add this in here from a 1.2, and x has to be greater than that. X is greater than 1.2. Okay, so that's in that's increasing. Now decreasing, let's take a look at decreasing, okay? So decreasing, where's it going downhill? Well, it's going downhill here. So decreasing. It's going downhill from a negative infinity down to this point, but the x values, x values to negative 1.2. And it's also going downhill from x values 0 to 1.2. Union 1.2 comma um, to infinity. Or in set notation, um, I'm going to say x is less than negative 1.2. This is just set notation. And I'm also going to say x is between uh, decreasing 0, less than x, less than 1.2, OK? Increasing, decreasing. This is hard. We'll keep working on it, OK? All right, now, f of negative 3. Um, if you plug negative 3 in, so one of the things I can do on my calculator that I kind of like is I can use my trace, but it's easier. So I put um, x to the fourth, subtract 3x squared, subtract 5 of a graph, oh, hold on, hold on, x to the fourth over arrow, minus 3x squared over arrow, and then subtract 5, here it is, graph there, same graph I just saw, and then if I want to do negative 3, I can go trace. I'm just going to put my trace button. Trace button's right here. That's with my fancy calculator trace. And I can go my negative 3, OK? Now, you can actually download these also. You can find these for, like, almost free. They're about 100 bucks um, if you buy the calculator. But you can actually get an app on these TI-84s as well. So there's all sorts of cool things with technology, OK? So I can answer a 49. So f of negative 3 is equal to 49, which is a point way up here. It's a point way up here at negative, whoop, negative 3, my bad, <laughs> negative 3, 49, okay? All right, now, last but not least, again, one more. All we're doing is showing how these things are curvy. So on my Desmos calculator on my phone, let's get rid of that, and let's see the last one. Put in... I'm going to put in an x to the fifth power, subtract 3x to the third power, plus 2. And it looks like that. Okay, so, Oh, weird, huh? Look at that weird squiggly thing, huh? So let me try and draw that. Okay. Okay, that little bump. That little bump is called an inflection point. Inflection point it's starting to head down, then curves down and around. That's called an inflection point. We'll talk about that in a second, okay? You're going to need to know that for calculus. Okay, seems like it goes through at negative 2. Just getting that off my calculator. Um, and then if I need to know that point, that point's at negative 1.3 and 5. So I'm going to give you the x value, right? x equals negative 1.34 x values, right? Um, I want to know that bottom point, which is a 1.3, so about a negative 0.8, and about a 1.3, and okay, so that's right about there. That's an x value of about 1.3. Um, it goes through at 1.5, about there and it goes through at about one zero, okay? So I like Desmos, see what I did? I just tapped on the point, cool, tap, tap. I can get all these points, which is really slick, okay? So then if I take and I draw this 
picture in my calculator, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go and make it look like this. It's going to look something like that. It's going to go through at point zero 0.02. Little bendy, little bendy, down through and around up. Okay. All right. Looks like that. So I think what we need to know more than anything is the shape of these. We'll come back to that, okay? Increasing, decreasing. Okay, so increasing. Where is it increasing? Well, it's going uphill from negative infinity to negative 1.3. From negative infinity to negative 1.3. Okay, as a set notation, I would say x is less than negative 1.3. And it's also increasing from down here at positive 1.3. 1.3 to all the way up to infinity, okay? In set notation, we'd say x is greater than 1.3, okay? Decrease, it's just going downhill from here to here. So decreasing, I'm going to slide this over. Hopefully you guys have that. Decreasing, going downhill. x values, right? So it's going downhill from negative 1.3 x value to a positive 1.3 x value. So set notation, or I'm sorry, interval notation, negative 1.3 comma a 1.3 or as set notation to go 1.3 less than x less than 1.3 okay so real quick what I wanted to show more anything is how they're curvy so we see that an x squared really has two x intercepts has one what I'd call max or min x cubed has one two three x-intercepts, but it has one, two. It has two max or mins. An x to the fourth kind of has one bump, two, three, so it, you can see it, how it changes. And finally, an x to the fifth looks something like this, okay? Um, f to the one, I can plug in one. I can take and plug in one, e and probably the easiest one. I can use the trace button. I'll show you how my trace button works, though. Kind of slick with trace button. Um, X to the, f whoops, to the fifth. Move it over. Subtract three. X to the third. And plus two. And I'll get the same graph I did on my Desmos as I do my fancy calculator. Um, if I want to go to trace and I want to go to trace um, positive one, I plug that in and I get an answer of zero. One zero, which right there. So I've got f of 1 is equal to 0, which is a point on my graph right there. Okay, so if you don't have Desmos, I think you should get it. I think Desmos, again, I'll go back to the app. So I found this in the app store. Desmos is awesome. didn't cost me anything. Um, if you have a nice calculator, They'll do a lot of graphing, and there's a lot of real nice features. This will do that the Desmos won't do. Uh, but between both of them, you got it made. So anyway, that's what I got for today. I've got an assignment on in your journal for you that I'd like you to do over the weekend.